Hello YouTube. It's your boy Dante with another graphics optimization guide. Today we are going to be looking at the game Zenless Zone 0. The purpose of this guide is to help you gain performance without sacrificing any noticeable visual quality. I will show you side by side comparisons of all graphics settings along with their performance costs so you guys can set them according to your hardware. For this I will be using an RTX 3060 Ti at 4K resolution and unlocked frame rate. Now with all of that out of the way, without further ado, let's do this. In graphics settings of this game, as usual, we get a few basic settings in start which I will explain to you quickly in the end. So let us skip them for now and start with anti-aliasing here. This setting is used to reduce the jagged edges of 3D models in the game. At disabled setting, we get jaggedness and pixelation all over the screen as expected. With temporal anti-aliasing, in short TAA, you get almost all the pixelation removed with a softer picture. In SMAA, we get the sharper image back, but it lacks the ability to make the image clean. Performance-wise, TAA and SMAA perform the same, while disabled save me 9 FPS. Here, I recommend TAA, but you can choose SMAA as well if you want the image to be sharper. Next is global illumination. This setting adds depth to the scene by adding shadows to objects depending on the light's direction. In high setting, we get the best image with a lot of depth. In medium setting. It does not fully disable global illumination, but we still lose some depth in the image. When performance is compared, there was a 13 FPS difference between both settings. Here I would recommend medium global illumination as the performance difference is high and since this is a fast paced game, you will not notice the lesser global illumination in the surroundings most of the time anyway. Next we have the most demanding setting in the game, Shadows, which controls the resolution of shadows in the game. In high setting, we get very good shadows with shadow filtering applied. In medium, we lose the shadow filtering, but the shadow resolution remains the same. In low, the shadow resolution takes a tiny bit of hit, but they still look good enough when it comes to shadows from complex objects like these. Performance wise there was a whopping 26 FPS difference between high and low setting. I would recommend two settings here. High if you care about shadow filtering and have a good PC. But if you don't care about shadow filtering or have an old PC or laptop then don't select medium. Just select low and get the huge FPS boost instead as low shadows don't look very bad resolution wise anyway. Next is FX quality which controls the intensity of special effects and particles produced by various animations like your character attacks and any kind of particles on the map. Here is the difference between high and very low setting in this particle heavy scene. The lower you take the setting, the less particles would be produced. Performance wise, this is not a demanding setting at all which made me lose almost no FPS. But I would suggest going to medium if you have performance issues in scenes like these or in intense battles. Next is shading quality that sets the visual fidelity of ambient shadows affecting the colors of different objects when illuminated. This means it controls how accurate the lighting will be in the game. Though in this game in multiple locations I was not able to spot any difference between high and low settings. Maybe the differences are just way too hard to notice since the game already has very good lighting. Performance wise there was only a 6 FPS difference between high and low setting. Here I would recommend medium setting just to be on the safe side. Character quality in most games controls the texture quality of characters. But in this game it only controls the detail rendered in characters depending on distance. Here you can see one of our characters lose detail when I switch to low setting. Performance wise I gained 4 FPS by switching to low. Here I will recommend low setting 
as it does not affect any textures and your main character detail is never affected as you are always near the screen. High precision character resolution is a setting that adds more polygons to your character model so they look more rounded from the sides and not blocky. Here you can see in global setting that multiple spots are well rounded than the disabled setting. Dynamic setting keeps close characters high poly and keeps far off characters low poly. When performance is compared, I got 126, 135 and 137 on global, dynamic and disabled setting respectively. Here I will recommend dynamic setting to save FPS as we are not gonna notice the roundness of models from far away. Environment quality affects the model detail of a lot of objects. In fact, it affects almost everything around you from ground detail and buildings to small objects, as you can see in this comparison of high versus low. Performance wise, I lost 4 FPS by going from high to low. Here I will recommend high setting as the visual difference is too big. Anisotropic sampling is another name for anisotropic filtering, which controls the textures of ground surface at distance when viewed from an angle like this. Here you can see the textures on these objects when 16x setting is compared to 1x setting. Basically for a distance like this, a 4x setting is more than enough. This is not a performance heavy setting at all, but on old laptops you may lose a few FPS in 16x setting. Here I will recommend 8x setting. Mirror reflections applies reflections to reflective surfaces like water and mirrors. But in this game it only applies to water. All the reflective surfaces apart from water have these pre-baked reflections added to them. Whether it is a car mirror or a glass surface like this. And reducing the setting has no effect on these. Even in water surfaces only high has actual reflections, while medium, low and disabled have this artificial baked reflection. Performance wise, this cost me 7 FPS while going from high to medium. After that, all lower settings had no performance difference. Here I will recommend disabled setting as most of the map consists of fake reflections. Also there is a problem in this game's optimization that a certain setting will cost you FPS even if the effects related to that setting is not present on the screen. In this case, if you set to high, even if there is no water surface nearby, somehow you will still lose FPS. Volumetric fog adds fog and light rays from the sun in the game. High setting as expected gives you detailed light rays. Medium almost has no difference compared to high. In low setting, we can see that the light rays lost a bit of detail. Disabled setting of course disables this effect. As for fog and haze, all settings look the same for me in all places. Performance wise, I had 138, 138, 142 and 149 FPS in high, medium, low and disabled setting respectively. Here I will recommend low setting as there are rare cases in this game that you will encounter this effect. And on top of that, just like reflections, if you have set this to higher setting, it will eat your FPS even if this effect is not present in the area. Bloom is just a post process effect that adds a glow to light sources. This setting costs no FPS at all, so set this according to your preference. Motion Blur is another post-process effect that blurs fast-moving objects and costs no FPS at all. So once again, set it to your liking. Distortion adds a post-process effect to your attacks. Your attacks will look as if they are cutting through space and time like in an anime movie. This is yet another effect that does not cost performance, so set it according to your choice. Color filter adds a blue-green tint to your game that costs no performance. It is up to your personal choice what you prefer, 
but I would still suggest zero value so that the colors pop off more and look more natural. Now let us quickly discuss the basic settings in the start before I show you the comparison of maxed setting versus optimized setting. In display mode, you select the resolution that you want to play at. Image quality is just another name for graphics presets that change all graphics setting depending on what you select here, like in every game. In FPS, you can select your frame rate limit of 30, 60 or unlimited. VSync is used to reduce screen tearing. So if you have tearing in your image, then enable this. In the end, rendering is the resolution scale option of this game, where 1.0 means native resolution, 0.8 means 80% and 1.2 means 120% of your resolution will be rendered. Now let us compare the maxed setting of this game with our optimized setting. As you can see, there is almost no visual loss between both images and we went from 131 FPS to 173 FPS. And this result was with shadows set to high quality. If we set shadows to low, which you are seeing right now as comparison, then we get to 198 FPS, which is a whopping 67 FPS boost. And this brings us to the end of the guide. If this video was helpful to you, Kindly like and support the channel by subscribing. Good luck and happy gaming.